So as Paul mentioned, I'm Katrina McAlpine and I'm the Research Data Manager um, based in the library. And so we actually have a team of four of us who work in the library supporting research data management. So there's myself, um, Jennifer McLean, who's our Research Data Officer, Jean Melzak, who plays a role in digital curation, and Kayla Maloney, who is our Data Analysis Officer. Um, and like Matthias, in this space we have worked in collaboration and partnership with the Research Portfolio and ICT in um, setting up data management tool and policies and processes, um, and that's something that's still ongoing. So again, like Matthias, I'm not going to do a live demo, but I do have screenshots of the tool and I'm going to talk you through it. But first I thought um, I would just provide a bit of context about um, why we're doing this and how we got here. So at the University of Sydney, we do have a 2014 research data management policy um, procedures from 2015, and then we have local provisions that are being rolled out across um, at the faculty level. So Sydney Conservatorium of Music and the Faculty of Engineering and IT were our early adopters in this space, and that they were actually involved in policy discussion, um, I think, as early as 2013. So these were things that took a, a while to come in, but now that they're here, um, there's more to come. Um, so the policy and the procedures do main mandate that all researchers, um, that all research at the university must be supported by an RDMP, and the procedures nominate our RDMP tool as this platform to be used. So throughout the policy process, um, there were discussions, and really the feedback was that for researchers you want to try to avoid duplicating um, input. So it was really hoped that if we're having an RDMP tool that there could be integration with other systems uh, like Curtin. What we have done is integrate that with the request for storage. So we did have um, a paper or a PDF RDMP checklist that was developed for the Anne Seeding the Commons project. And we did then update that form in um, May of 2014. But with the policy having come in and having these two early adopter groups in the form of the Conservatorium and the Faculty of Engineering and IT, we really needed an online tool that was across the whole university um, for researchers to use. So there were discussions, do we integrate this with another process such as the ethics approval process, but not necessarily all research is going to require ethics approval. Um, so we did go with the integrate with storage option. And one of the other drivers for this was around this time the university was implementing um, the research data store for researchers to store their data. And so having the RDMP connected to that helps to provide some context around the content of the research data store and enables um, the university to do some sort of planning in terms of what do we need, you know, how quickly is our storage growing, how, how much is it related to data um, for planning for future infrastructure. So as part of the ANS Metadata Stores project, uh, we had implemented Redbox for our research data registry. And Redbox does have a function, it's a researcher dashboard functionality. And so as part of a pilot, we decided to use that for our RDMP tool. And so that first release was about August 2014, and that came in with the integration of um, request for storage. And really the pilot just continued. Um, so it just continued to grow and the next major release was in April 2015. Um, and, and in this case it was an integrating with a request to use high performance computing. So since then there's been a lot of um, additional enhancement, some integrations, improvements, uh, trying to fix the workflow so that it's easy for researchers to use as possible, as well as the library and ICT. At the moment we don't have as many completed plans as Curtin, so I think in my last check we had 680 that have been completed, and so that's per project. Um, researchers should complete an RDMP on a project basis, and they get allocated their storage on a project basis. So if they're working on multiple projects, they should have a different RDMP and a different storage allocation for those. But I think we do have about 2,000 plans in the system. Um, so some faculties, you are required to submit a plan um, with your funding application for internal funding. So some of, those, some of those researchers will complete a draft plan, submit a PDF of it, and then if, if the project goes ahead, they'll go through the submission process. Okay, so I, I didn't want to risk a live demo, but I are, am going to show you what parts of the tool look like, not all of it. Um, this Before You Start page, we really developed fairly recently, and it was in response to <laughs> 
Well, primarily lots of questions that our team was getting. So you need to have a lead chief investigator to submit the form and people getting through to the end not being able to submit their form saying, you know, who can be a lead chief investigator, what do I have to do? Um, the same with external collaborators. So it really just made sense to have this before you start page um, to help people out. And then we just go through to the overview. And so it's based, as I mentioned, on the uh, project. So you give it a project title. The abbreviated project title is used for storage allocations. Um, and then you select whether this is a research project or a higher degree by research project. We're actually fairly flexible in this. So we would rather that people are storing their data. So if they're a student and they're doing research, we would prefer that they're storing their data on our research data store rather than being lost on a USB. So they can, it's fairly open as to who can apply, but they will need to put their supervisor as the lead chief investigator. I nominate faculty, I've decided that I'm in law today. And the requester information is actually taken from up the top on this previous slide. You can see that I'm signed in as me, so that is pre-populated. And the RDMP tool does integrate with LDAP and with Mint. And so from Mint, we can take information about people, publications, and grants. So if people, if this is linked to, I think, just an ARC or NHMRC grant, um, or if we have the grant information, they can just start typing that information in and it will populate the grant details there. FOR codes, project dates, um, and any of this can be updated. So the contributor space is really designed around the storage allocation. So it should be all the people who are involved in the project, um, but it does also control who has access to the storage. So whoever is not, whoever's in that space on the previous slide of, um, for the requester will be auto-populated into this contributors list. They can be removed. If they are the lead chief investigator, they can update their role to the lead chief investigator. But generally, um, most people will be contributors, but you can also assign someone to be a reader. So they would have read-only access to that storage. Another enhancement we made fairly recently around that issue of needing to have a lead chief investigator is the search functionality, and you can search by name, email address, or uni key, um, and it will tell you whether that person can be a lead chief investigator. And we have help available if you think they should be able to, but they can't. So this is one of the main areas where people can provide information about their research data, and we don't have that many free text fields. So this is a really good place for people to provide as much information as possible, um, but we do see a real mix of information coming through from only a couple of sentences to you know, a paragraph or so. And I also don't really like the carrot and stick analogy, but um, this is the carrot of the access to the research data store. And so originally it was really promoted as you could request two terabytes of storage, but we're really not, I mean, here I've decided that in 2018 I need 30 terabytes and that will just go through. But it, again, it is that opportunity to start a discussion. So if someone says, oh, I, I need 200 terabytes, well, why do you need it? Are there other services we can be offering you? Is this the best place? Um, and just start those conversations. So you can complete an RDMP just for the purposes of research data management planning. So you can say that you do not request, that you do not require um, digital storage, which is fine. We do have two types of storage. Um, we have classic research data store and we have research computing optimized storage. And I'm not gonna go into that, um, but it's something you can ask about offline if you like. And here you can see that that abbreviated project title is part of the file part for the um, storage allocation. Um, you can provide extra information about your specific storage requirements, and I have ticked other and have forgotten to fill anything in. And where will you be keeping any physical data? And hopefully as specific as possible, not just it's stored in my bottom drawer. And then retention period. So as I mentioned, you can also request access to high performance computing using the form, and that can be updated later if you don't request it at the beginning. And then we have some more, more sort of data management style questions about sharing the type of data that it is. Can a description be shared? And what we don't have at the moment is an integration between Redbox, which is Redbox, our registry, and Redbox, our RDMP tool. So um, one option could be that you know, we could have some of the metadata taken from the RDMP form and put into the registry, but that is, I believe that functionality is there, but is not something that we've switched on. So this upload section, um, we do have people who do upload some documents. So 
Um, across the university, there's many places where you might be, or where researchers might be putting their documents relating to their research. So you don't want to have too many things in too many different places, but this is a space where you can update um, information that might be particularly helpful for that, that data. So I've just said I have a data dictionary and some software information about my analysis software I'm using. And then I'm signed in as an administrator, so I can see this admin tab, and both um, the library team and the ICT team can see this. So it's a good spot for sharing um, information between, the, between those two teams. And I should point out that the tool does have an audit functionality, um, but while you'll be able to see what the changes were, you won't necessarily know why. So this provides a space for us to say that we've made this change and this is why we've done it. And then the researcher can submit. And this goes to their, the, whoever they've nominated as the lead chief investigator for approval. And then that comes to the research data team and we'll approve it. We'll just do a quick review um, at this stage. A fairly recent update has been that if you are the lead chief investigator and you're the requester, you don't then need to go in and approve it as the LCI. And again, that was based on feedback. We were having researchers submit their plans. They've nominated themselves as the lead chief investigator. And then they're saying, I haven't got my storage. What's going on? I, you know, I don't, I, you know, I've been waiting weeks. And you'd go in and you would see, oh, well, actually, you haven't improved your own plan. Um, so it didn't really make sense to them. didn't really make sense to us. So we've now streamlined that workflow so that um, they can just submit it and it will come through to our team for approval. And then if they're using the classic RDS, um, once we've approved it, it will now go off for auto-provisioning of storage. And again, that's a fairly um, recent update. So that's generally what the plan looks like. There is the researcher dashboard, and they'll be able to both um, start a new plan. They'll be able to see their completed plans. They'll be able to see plans that they've sent for approval, um, or if they need to approve plans. So I've pretty much gone through most of these features. Um, so it does capture data management information, including about physical data. Um, you can request access to the research data store and HPC. Um, you can add and remove contributors to the project and storage. So if someone comes onto your project after you've started, you can update the plan and that will give them access to the storage. Or if someone leaves, we just update the plan and they come straight back off. Again, um, it has an export function as a PDF, so if you need to submit that either in a digital format or print it and submit it with other documentation, you can do that, and it also keeps the different versions, so you can print um, the appropriate PDF version. And it, it is a living document, so we do want people going in there and updating it. Um, the contributors is one example, but you might need to update where your physical data is being stored. and it does have a clone functionality as well. So, as I mentioned, it should be a different plan per project, but if you're setting up a whole bunch of projects that were similar or had similar people working on them, you can clone and then um, edit the appropriate details. Um, so just quickly about who supports this, we have the research data team, um, the liaison librarians in the library are becoming more involved in the data management space, and then our ICT teams from help desk through to specialised support um, and work on um, making updates, liaising with the vendor, and forward planning. Um, and then in the strategy space, it's really, again, a partnership between the library, ICT, and the research portfolio, influenced by what researchers need, want, funding requirements, um, and university policy as well. So what does the future look like for us? Well, the tool's been in place for about 18 months now, I think, if my maths is correct. Um, so it's really a good time for us to sit back and reflect on what we've done. There's been a lot of changes, a lot of them have happened um, in about the past six months, and at the same time, other systems around the university are being updated. So we can really look at what else is out there in terms of opportunities for integration, um, trying to avoid that duplication of effort for researchers. We're continuing to receive feedback from them, and we're really keen to hear it, what works for them, what, you know, what doesn't work for them, um, and really, so at the University of Sydney, um, research data management is really taking off as well, and we have a new research data steward who's a fairly senior academic and chairs a strategy group on research data management. So again, it's a good opportunity for us to just reflect on what the landscape here is at university um, in Australia and globally just to make sure that um, we're supporting our researchers the best we can. So that's about it from me. Um, you can contact me. Um, I've put our team's contact email there, and that will go through to four of us, and also a link to our research data management guidelines.
as well. So that's all.